Hello and welcome to week four, day two in English. And we're going to be looking at sentence openers and story openers today. And I thought I would read um, for you, to help you with this, from a book called It Was a Dark and Stormy Night by Janet from Alan Eberg. Right, I'm sure you've probably read some of their other stories like Each Peach, Pear, Plum and Burglar Bill, various other ones. Now this story, might have a long story, I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to read the beginning because there's a little boy called Antonio who's been kidnapped by some brigands, and brigands are sort of rough thieves who live in the mountains. And Antonio has been asked to tell them a story. And he keeps starting his story in different ways. But the brigands, or the chief of the brigands, who's in charge, doesn't really want any of them. So I'm going to read you some of these. Um, and then maybe you can use some of them in your own writing. So here we go. It was a dark and stormy night. The rain came down in torrents. That means very heavily. And there were brigands on the mountains and wolves. And the chief of the brigands said to Antonio, I'm bored, tell us a story. Antonio was a small, brave boy, eight years old, who had been kidnapped by the brigands and carried off to their secret cave. He scratched his curly head, puffed out his cheeks and said, I don't know any stories. Make one up, growled the chief. Yeah, said the brigands, begin at the beginning. Righto, Antonio said. And he paused for a moment and began his story. There we go, there's a picture of the mighty chief. And there they are in the cave. And here's little Antonio thinking up his story. It was a dark and stormy night, said Antonio. It was a week or simple. The rain came down in torrents. There were brigands on the mountains and wolves, and the chief of the brigands said... At this point, the real chief held up his hands. Get rid of the rain! I beg your pardon? Antonio looked puzzled. No rain, said the chief. I'm sick of it. Yeah, said the brigands. Let's have a dry story. Once more, Antonio paused and then, righto, how about this? It was a cold and frosty night. The snow swirled down around the entrance to the cave and there were wolves on the mountains and bears. Bears as well, said the brigands. And the wolves and bears crept ever closer to the entrance to the cave where only a hissing, crackling fire kept them at bay. Meanwhile, outside, the real rain rattled down and the real wolves shook their soaking wet fur. Hang on a minute, the chief tossed a log onto the fire. And the chief tossed a log onto the fire, said Antonio. The chief blew his nose and blew his nose. Stop that, said the chief. And all the while the pile of logs got smaller and smaller, Antonio continued, and the fire burnt lower and lower, and the wolves and bears crept nearer and nearer and nearer. Ooh, cried the brigands. Finally, the fire went out, and the wolves and bears came rushing in, opened wide their hungry jaws, and I'm fed up with wolves, said the chief. Bears too, said the brigands. Well, they were nearly fed up with you, Antonio scratched his head. Well, how about chickens and squirrels then? Don't be cheeky. The chief mopped his brow with the same spotty hanky with which he had previously blown his nose. Anyway, I'm also fed up with caves. And mountains, said the brigands. Let's have a flatter story. By the way, in case you were wondering, Antonio had been captured by the brigands, all six of them, that very evening down in the valley. He was supposed to have been guarding his family's goats, but had been caught napping and kidnapped by the brigands. They kidnapped a couple of baby kids too, goats that is, and stole a line of washing. Now, with lanterns flickering in the high wind and rain lashing their faces, Antonio's deeply worried parents, Mr and Mrs Panetta, were out upon the mountainside searching for him. Antonio puffed out his cheeks and fidgeted about. 
firelight flickered on the glittering daggers and polished pistol butts of the prigons, which, I may say, were just about the only things that they ever cleaned. Their hands were dirty, the backs of their necks dirtier still, and nowhere in that cave was there a toothbrush to be seen. For the third time, Antonio began his story. Righto, it was a bright and starry night. That's better, said the chief. The silver moon shone down upon the silver beach beside the silver sea. Ah, sighed the brigands, and one of them, Giorgio, added, I love silver. Suddenly, lumbering towards the mighty chief and his brigand band, as they sat quietly dozing on the silver sand, that rhymes, observed the chief admiringly, came half a dozen hungry bears. At once the brigands protested, not bears again, we said no bears, bears on a beach, that's silly. All right then, um, pirates, said Antonio, cutthroat pirates charging up across the sand from the left and South American ruffians. What kind of a beach is this, said the chief, racing in from the right and massive sharks churning up the waters of the bay and, Antonio cuddled his brain for some more ideas, a crocodile infested swamp behind them, killer parrots in the palm trees and, and, he paused again to catch his breath and work out if he could what happened next. What happened next? said the chief. Well, the chief and his brigands put up a brave fight. Of course they did, said the chief, but it was no use. What do you mean, no use? They were surrounded and outnumbered. So what? said the chief. Let's get to it now. The pirates rushing in. The crocodile infested swamp. Cut up with cutlasses, porcupines with arrows. That's a good word, said the Britsy, another brigand. Swallowed alive by sharks and crocodiles, pecked by... Pecked nothing, the disgruntled chief staggered to his feet. I'll tell you what really happened. Yeah, tell him, chief, cried the brigands. The chief said, said the chief, taking over the story. Come on, men, follow me. Whereupon, without flinching and with never a thought for his own safety, the mighty chief battled his way through that preposterous ambush. With one arm tied behind me, uh, I mean him, he wiped the beach with the pirate chief, the ruffian chief and the shark and the crocodile chiefs come to that. And the parrot chief, chief, said the brigands, and him. After that, he led his grateful band of brigands. Three cheers for the chief, yelled Giorgio. His grateful band to... At this point, the chief's hitherto lively invention began to falter. To uh, a place of safety. What place, chief? inquired the brigands. Uh, a castle. What, on a beach? said Antonio. Why not? It's better than bears. Perhaps it was a sand castle, cried Fabrizzi, thinking to join in the fun. But the mighty chief was not amused. He banged Fabrizzi on the head with a wooden spoon. A rather greasy wooden spoon, as it happens. Lately used for stirring a rather greasy stew. After that, with the spoon conveniently in his hand, the chief took the opportunity to give the stew a further stir. The big black pot, encrusted with previous generations of stew, was bubbling sluggishly. Like a hot swamp, thought Antonio, as it hung suspended from a hook above the fire. Antonio watched the chief and the chief's enormous wavering shadow on the wall of the cave. He glanced around at the shadowy piles of stolen goods stacked everywhere. A broken bicycle dozens of pairs or half pairs of boots, an orange tree in a brass pot, a brass bed, an enormous tin plated megaphone, a barrel of wine, a considerable number of clockwork toys, a trio of trussed up chickens and Antonio's own little goats tethered towards the rear of the cave. So all those things that they've stolen. As far as Antonio could see in the gloom and the smoke, they were nibbling a straw hat. Oh, and there was the stolen washing, still on its line and hanging up to dry across the cave. Meanwhile, down in the valley, Mr and Mrs Panetta were drying out as well and drinking coffee in the kitchen and wondering what to do. Antonio's four little sisters were peeping at them from the stairs. The rain had eased and dawn itself was not far off. And the wolves, the real wolves, had slunk away. I'm going to leave it there. I won't read any more. This is the story you need to look for. Find out what happens to the brigands and Antonio. 
than hoping that you will have heard lots and lots of different ways of starting stories, four of them ten you need to keep starting again, and how you can add to stories and make them really interesting. Okay, good luck and see you soon. Bye bye.